Okay, cool. Um, so I'm Michael Zygram. Michael Zygram, this is Orion Reed. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about knowledge organization infrastructure, but actually about LLMs, or kind of both. You'll see in a minute. Um, I happen to really like this meme. Everyone wants an LLM, but everyone doesn't want to figure out how to organize their data within their community, within their DAO, within their org, so that it's actually useful for an LLM. And so we're going to give you a quick speed run of how we thought about that problem, then show you how we built that uh, with Block Science and Metagov. So, um, first thing is, hmm. there we go. Um, this is an org to org knowledge project. So, we've got a laboratory for digital governance, Metagov. It's a nonprofit. You should check it out. We do lots of cool stuff. Um, I'm a research director there. I'm also a founder of Block Science, which is a digital civil engineering firm. And we have our knowledge management LLM enabled system. We built one. We're open sourcing it. Actually, Orion built it. Um, we also have an instance at Metagov, and we're working on getting them to talk to each other. So networked, uh, I guess NPC is networked player character. Well, these network player characters are the orgs themselves. And so you can imagine the applicability to DAOs in the future. For now, we're working with uh, these, these communities. Uh, overall architecture, really high level. Got a bunch of people. You've got some interfaces, you've got some data, you've got some rules, and you've got some ways of interacting with your environment. That allows you to pull data, write data, interact with various other applications. Pretty straightforward. But then once you have text in, text out interfaces, you can also talk to each other. And so we're looking at the ways that the human to human, human to machine, machine to machine, et cetera, communication can work in an org to org setting. The overall architecture of the software is basically um, requirements. They want it to be instanceable. Anybody should be able to make their own. Uh, governable, meaning you can determine which data is in it, how the chunking algorithms work, what your vector stores are, what your foundational models are, and ultimately interoperable, hence networked. Um, the overall set of interfaces we have range from actually setting up and deploying the software to using it on a day-to-day -day basis to actually governing it. And with that, Orion is going to show you what we've got. Hello. So, um, as Z alluded to, the uh, like the real work of making these LLMs useful is really all of the infrastructure that sits underneath. And so, what I'm going to hopefully demonstrate is that we have a few different interfaces for different kinds of purposes, um, but they're all talking to the same infrastructure. Um, I think it's also worth pointing out here that we're quite explicitly not trying to build a platform. In fact, we're kind of trying to do the opposite, where what we would like is to support people doing the work where they're already doing it um, and kind of let them take advantage of that more than they already are. So as one example of that, we have uh, an LLM interface in our Slack. So if I, if I ping the bot and ask a question, um, it's going to reach out into our knowledge base. Uh, and for context, our knowledge base is made up of kind of everywhere that we work. So that's, you know, that's Slack, that's HackMD, Google Docs, presentations, kind of every, every platform and system. Um, and it's going to reach out into that, use that as context for like a retrieval augmented generation process, and give us mostly salient answers, as well as citing the sources that it, that it uh, brings that stuff in from. Um, another interface to the same system is this web interface. Uh, so I could do a, a search, and you could think of this a bit like internal Google. So we have um, GitHub repos, we have Medium articles, Slack messages. I think we have about 100,000 objects in this system at this point. Um, but this is like an interface that we can use to do kind of curation work and um, a lot of other like more structural querying. Um, let's see. And part of this architecture is that we're really not trying to become like a new, a new source of truth, right? So we're not piping everything in and kind of bringing in people to this platform. Um, all of these are just references to stuff that already exists, where it exists, right? So we have Git repos and the rest of it. Um, one more interface, which is kind of some fun here, is we have this little uh, canvas-based interface. So this is the kind of canvas that you can you know, scribble on and all of that fun stuff. Um, and in this setup, we just have said that if you're a green shape, then you're a, a vector store query. And so this is going to pull in context about CAD-CAD. And so I can take this graph. In fact, if I want to, I can treat it as a, a force-directed graph and get a slightly nicer layout. Um, and then I can 
uh, I can build a, a kind of a DAG here, so I could actually say, you know, uh, make this, I don't know, make this into emojis or something. Um, here we're doing kind of textual uh, transformations, but there's nothing about this model that, that requires that. Um, and so if I just hit this button, uh, we're going to basically pull in that context, and then we're going to do a bunch of LLM-based transformations and kind of do this DAG execution model. Um, I'll let that burr away for a second. Um, it's definitely a lot of fun fiddling with this thing. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and the nice thing about this kind of environment as, as an interface is, um, and I can't do it with this right this second, but this is a multiplayer environment, so you can send someone a URL while you're on a call, they can come in, you'll see their cursor, and you can kind of collabor collaboratively uh, work to organize your knowledge and, and interact with this system. Um, that has other, other silly consequences, like for example, I added this um, physics system, so you can do uh, a full physics simulation on your diagram if you uh, feel that that's a very important thing for your org to do. Um, that might be about it. Yeah. Um, I'll add like one last point. So a lot of this, a lot of this is about composability. So we actually have two separate instances. We showed you the demo from the one that we have running at Block Science. There's one running and tested in Metagov. And one of the cool things about this open source. Um, Canvas-based interface and the multiplayer nature of it is it's also the tooling for getting these things to work together. So you can actually generate inter-organizational workflows if you have me, say, logged in with um, Metagov API keys and Orion logged in with Block Science API keys. We could actually work on the same Canvas and have those two systems actually be piping into each other. And so there's a lot of areas of exploration, mostly around you know a sort of interplayer and interorganizational interactions enabled by these substrates. And to Orion's point earlier, a lot of our emphasis has been on avoiding the platform product archetypes and focusing more on building stuff that you could just pull an instance for yourself. And insofar as we can imagine this growing, it would grow as a bunch of different orgs having their own instance and those instances talking to each other. So like an actual peer-to-peer -peer network of organizations instead of just like mega institutions, thus actually fulfilling some of the vision of DAOs in a way that also scales up to maybe more complex like societal roles. Yeah. yeah. So that's it. Right. Any questions? Was anyone listening? Can anybody tell me what we said? <laughs> I'll take that as a no. Yes, so we could write, it's basically a plugin architecture. So it's not at all intended to be monolithic. So actually, if you took like a, uh, I guess you could do GraphQL queries and go to the graph. You could use true blocks and go straight to basically the blockchain as if it were a data lake. You could, basically, you'd have to build the plugins you wanted. So if you had a data source, this is basically write a sensor to the data source, and then it's a data source. And that works in the other direction as well. So if you wanted to write an actuator type plugin that was actually going to do things like vote, you could do that, but you'd have to figure out how you wanted to manage your keys. So there's a couple different tricks for taking data from what is effectively not secure cloud environments and kind of secure them so that automations can write to things. I think we've heard about people doing automations, but I want to give a shout out to um, uh, Shield3, which is doing cool security stuff uh, in the cloud, and a friend of mine, Isaac Potka's company. So if you're interested in automating stuff kind of between the worlds of Web2 and Web3, then check out that company. Sky would very much like me to tell you that I went to Dartmouth College, as he did as well.